Hey there, YouTube. It is our Rez here, and it is time once again to crack open that 2000 year old fairy tale storybook that most people call the Bible, but I call bullshit. In my most recent Rez's Bible reading video, I got up to Genesis chapter 21. So let's get into Genesis chapter 22. All right, let's start reading. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, even though Ishmael exists, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham said, and, uh, and Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. Well, wouldn't that be three young men? Because isn't Isaac pretty, pretty young at this point? And clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Or the voices in his head. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young, uh, young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. Well, one of them, one of them would go and see him again, but <laughs> if, if, if everything went up according to plan. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they went, both of them together. Isaac should have been like, where the fuck it? Where the fuck is the burnt offering? Like, there's signs. Like, this kid is fucking retarded if he doesn't realize what the fuck his dad has planned. But, um, and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. Well, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Which is what I said. But it's fucking pretty obvious. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Which, yeah. He will, but fucking Abraham doesn't know that. Neither does fucking Isaac. And at this point, Abraham knows that if God doesn't intervene, he's going to sacrifice his son. Like, he fucking knows that. But... Uh, uh, ba -ba and they came to the place where God... Oh, which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. At that point, I would have been like, what the fuck is going on? And cut me loose, you fucking asshole. That's me. <laughs> And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him of the out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Well, no fucking shit. If he's talking to you, he knows where the fuck you are. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, for me. Again! He's not his only fucking son. Ishmael's walking the fuck around. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, him uh, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns, or horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Yeah, that was a hard little part of the sentence to read. If I was Isaac, I would have been like, fuck you, dad, you fucking, you didn't know this shit was gonna happen, you're gonna fucking slit my throat, fuck you, dad, I'm going to fucking Sodom. <laughs> well, that's right, it's actually fucking destroyed at this point, but they don't, I don't think they know that. Um, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jiriah. Or whatever the fuck that is. As it is said, to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham out of heaven a second time. And said, by myself, I have, uh, I'm fucking having trouble reading. This, this is weirdly worded. By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. No, it says an angel. 
For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, again, not his only fucking son. He has Ishmael running around. He does Sure, he doesn't know that the motherfucker's still walking around, but still, like, God should fucking know that, and if, if he does, which, no shit he does, he's fucking lying to Isaac. Or, he's not lying to Isaac, uh, he's lying to Abraham. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand in, uh, which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Yeah. Um, what about the uh, families where the women and other family members have just obliterated, obliterated their families? Hmm? So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Again, I would have been like, if I was Isaac, I would have been like, nah, fuck you. But add sues me. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, Milcah, whatever, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nathor, or Nahor, or whatever the fuck his name is. Huz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Kemuel, the father of Aram. Huz, really, Huz and Buzz, what the fuck? And Chasid, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Jidlath. Jidlath, I guess, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begat Rebekah, these eight Milcah did bear to Nahor. Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Riuma, she bare also Teba and Gaham and Tahash and Mecca, I guess. Whatever the fucking horrible, fucking. All right, chapter twenty-three. And Sarah was in a hundred, was an hundred and seventy and twenty years old. Wouldn't that be 190? Uh, these were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in whatever the fuck you pronounce that as. Kirjatharba? The same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham stood up from where his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of, bury of a burying place with you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. That's real fucking nice. And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchres, bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee this sepulchre. The sepulchre, whatever the fuck. But that thou mayest bury thy dead. Notice he never says wife, he just says the dead. Would have been like, uh, can I just bury my dead wife somewhere? Somewhere nice, preferably? And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zahar, or Zohar, whatever the fuck, ancient as Bible names, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field, for as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth. And Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth. Even of all that went in at the gate of his city, saying, Nay, my lord, hear me. The field give I thee, and the cave that is therein I give it thee. In the presence of the sons of my people give I it thee. Bury, bury thy dead. And Abraham bowed, in, bowed down himself before the, before the people of the land. And he spake unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, hear me, I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying unto him, My lord, 
Hearken unto me, the land is worth four hundred shekels of silver, which is that betwixt me and thee. Bury therefore thy dead. And Abraham hearkened unto unto Ephron. And Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. And the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, I guess, the field and the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all the hordes round about, were made sure, until Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth, for all that went in at the gate of this at the gate of his city. And after this Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan, and the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth. Chapter 24! And Abraham was old. No shit. His wife was like 190. He's got to be fucking pretty goddamn Asian himself. Well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things, except letting his wife die for him. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled all, over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. Trying to get some action there, Abraham? And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, and that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. Thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So, go get a fucking woman from my country, fuck the Canaanites. <laughs> That's essentially what that sounds like. It's like, don't fucking mess around with the fucking people in Canaan. Or in Canaan. Go fucking know where I'm from. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. So I guess don't, don't bring him here or there again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me in that Swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my, unto my son from he, from from thence. Fucking shitty words. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. So, fucking I hate fuck the kid and I don't pick a wife from from here go back to where I live or where I used to live go get a wife but if the wife doesn't come don't don't bring my fucking uh son there what the fuck and the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear to him concerning that matter I don't get that under the thigh of Abraham so is he trying to cop a feel of his master's ass what the fuck and it's, it's Huh. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master, and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose, and went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the same time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. So he was trolling for a pussy. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, not of me... I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and shew kindness in unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of the water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Is he talking out loud? Because if women are coming to fucking fill... I would fucking back away if I wa was walking towards somewhere, and I saw a cocksucker talking to himself, and there was not a Bluetooth thing in his fucking ear. That's just me. Ah, unto my master, or wait, uh, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also, let the same be she that thou hast 
appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast shewed kindness unto my master. And they came to pass, before he had done speaking, that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to God fucking the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon his shoulder. So, um, distant relative of Isaac, I guess, because he's she was born to um, Milcah, who was the wife of Nahor, which is Abraham's brother. So. They're like cousins, I guess. That, that's, that's the way I'm reading that, which is fucked beyond belief, though. And the damsel who was fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. How the fuck does this servant know what the fuck a woman looks like that... How the hell do you tell without looking at her fucking vagina do you know that she's a fucking virgin? That's that's just my question. That that's that's an honest like question. Uh, uh fuck. Oh, very fair to look upon a upon a virgin. So that, and the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. She said, Drink, my lord, and she hastened hasted, let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. When she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels too, until they have had have done drinking. And she hasted, and emptied her pitcher into the trough, and ran again unto the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace. To wit, whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So he's like, Hey, yeah, I wonder if God actually did what I asked him to do. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets, bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. Fucking, isn't that a little heavy? And said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, there is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? She said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Mika, Milka, whatever, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, Nor run to him. We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed his bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Brother, yeah, and and to the cousin of Isaac. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebecca had a brother, and his name was Laban, or Laban, whatever the fuck. And Laban ran out of unto the man, unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring of Rachel, one of his sister's hands, when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold he, behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For, for I have prepared the house and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he ungirdled his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. I thought, what the f- uh, I guess it is it's sort of implied with him bringing more than one camel, but... Uh, and there was sent meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine told mine errand, and he said, Speak on, and he said, I am Abraham's servant, and the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. Bull, yeah. And Sarah my, Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, again, because Canaan is such a shithole, in whose land I dwell, but thou shalt go unto my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. Yeah, who's going to be his fucking cousin? 
cousin and wife. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord be for whom I walk, will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for my son and my kindred, and of my family and of my father's house. Then thou shalt be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my kindred, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. So if they don't give up give give up the daughter, you're okay. And I came to this day unto the well, and said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, if thou thou do prosper my way which I go, behold I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she said to me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out of my out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in mine heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she said, she and she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, "Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also." So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. Can't really make anything drink. She gave them something to drink, but I don't think she actually forcibly put the fucking camels head into the trough. And I asked her and said, "Whose daughter art thou?" And she said, "The daughter of." Bethuel, the horse son whom Melchah bare unto him, and I put the earring upon her face and the bracelet upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto my unto his son, again, cousin. And now if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go. Let her be thy master's son's wife. Cousin wife. And the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard these word, their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave, have gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things, and they did eat and drink. He and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, "Send me away unto my master." And her brother and her mother said, "Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten, and after that she shall go." And he said unto him, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. So we're going to ask her if everything's kosher. Oh my god, and my fucking throat. Thank god this chapter... Is the chapter... Yes, the chapter's almost done. Thank fucking god. Uh... Oh, and they called Rebecca and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions. Let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. That's a nice sentiment. After, er, yeah. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well, the Horoi, for he dwelt to the south er, dwelt, dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. That's a little odd. And she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. The servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's, te Sarah's tent. Although she's fucking dead, so it's not her goddamn ten. Anymore, at least. 
<coughs> and took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was con comforted after his mother's death. That's the best way to go over your mother's death. Fuck someone in her goddamn tent that's no longer hers. Or, that's got to be a little bit fucked. J just a little bit. Just, just a tiny bit. Now, let's see how long this chapter is, because my voice... Oh, alright, this isn't too much. I'll do this chapter, and then uh, I'm done, so it'll end with chapter 25. Uh, let's see how much time. 24 minutes. Alright. Should be fast. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran, and Jokes... Jokshan, and Midan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan begat Chiba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Asherim, and Letushim, and Luimim. The sons of Midian, Epha, and Epher, and Hanuk, and Abida, and Elda. All of these were chil the children of Keturah, and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham, Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts, and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward, unto the east country. So, yeah, fuck all y'all dudes, I'm giving it to Isaac. Guys and, guys and gals, I guess, dudes and dudettes. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived in 103 score and 15 years so I'm assuming I I'm not good with that shit so I'm assuming a couple hundred years at least at this point then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age an old man and full of years and was gathered to his people and his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Mac Pelah, the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar the Hittite, which is before now. He buried him where fucking... Essentially what that means is he buried him right next to his goddamn first wife. And, but, funny thing. It says that his son's Isaac and Ishmael. So they they meet. They, they they know about each other that they're that one's alive. So Isaac was or Abraham was lying to fucking Isaac about or no. Abra or God was lying to Abraham saying that Isaac was his only son. The field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth, there was Abraham buried, and Sarah his wife. So he gets to finally lay down next to his goddamn fucking wife. And came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the well, the Haroi. Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Adam, or Abraham, I almost said Adam again. Uh, and these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, by, the, by their names according to their generations, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, and Kedar, and Adbeel, and Mis Mibsam. And Mishma, and Duma, and Masa, Hadar, and Tema, and Jitor, Napish, and Kedima. They are the sons. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names, by their towns and by their castles. Twelve princes according to their nations. And these are the years of the life of Ishmael, and hundred and thirty and seven years. So eh, nice chunk of change. And he gave up the ghost and died, and was gathered unto his people. He fucking lasted shorter time than his goddamn father, who lived in the fucking double, like, into his 200s at least. That's fucking nice. And they dwelt from Havilah unto Shore, that is, before Egypt, that ends that ghost toward Assyria. And he died in the presence of all his brethren. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, his fucking cousin. And Isaac entreated to the Lord, the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So, he was a little bit pissed that he was fucking his cousin, nothing happened. The children struggled together within her, 
And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the other shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment, and they call him Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. Um, and... The boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, because he did not eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sought pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And so said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he sware unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And then gave then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up, and went his way, thus Esau despised his birthright. So that is the end of this Rez's Bible reading. We will continue on uh, next time with chapter 26. My voice is going. Uh, I felt I need to do this because I'm in a very shitty mood. And this sort of makes me feel better. Because um, the reason I'm in a shitty mood. Because I found out that by the end of March, me and my family have to be out of where we are living right now. Because our landlord is complete and utter cut. Um... Now, in a couple days, give or take, a day or two, I will also be doing a video where I talk about 19 Kids and Counting, because I fucking hate that show. I catch every so often of it, uh, glimpses of it, and I fucking hate it. And it's religious, and that's why I said it at the end of this video. But, if you like it, favorite it, thumbs it up, spread it around if you want to piss off some Christians that you know. With my heretic beliefs, but I am Rez. This has been me reading the Bible with my commentary. Peace, love, harmony, and Esau! And, uh, yeah. Peace out. Con! Con! Esau!